Coming to you live from the Southeast Asian capital city of the Philippines, the land of 7,107 islands, I'm Art Bell, and this is Coast to Coast AM. Escorting you through the weekend, it is my honor and my privilege to be escorting you through the weekend, and what a weekend it is tonight, particularly so. My guest uh, this first hour, we are going to have a guest, is a, a very old friend of mine now. We've collaborated on any number of projects uh, over the years, a few, and I knew what he was doing. I uh, was sort of sworn to secrecy for a long time about uh, Robert's project. I have uh, I've compared Robert Bigelow over the years to uh, the older gentleman in the Russian space capsule you know the one in contact, the one who uh, issued the famous line, want to take a ride. <laughs> That's Robert to me. Anyway, Robert Bigelow graduated from Arizona State University with a Bachelor of Science degree in business admin in 1999. In 1999, he founded Bigelow Aerospace. BA, if you will, uh, is a general contracting investment research and development company that concentrates on achieving economic breakthroughs in the costs, and there are plenty of those, associated with the design, development, and construction of habitable space stations, space transportation, and launch facilities to the extent that they will be affordable for private enterprise use. Robert Bigelow is active and a member in various business, scientific, and community organizations. He is a member of the UNLV Foundation and an associate member of the Society for Scientific Exploration. He has launched a spacecraft. We'll tell you all about it when we get back. Here's another little uh, quick secret as we bring uh, Robert on. Uh, Bob Bigelow, just prior, when I was getting ready to come back to the, uh, the Philippines, I was really in a rush, going to embassies, doing all kinds of preparatory work to get back here to the Philippines. And Bob called me up uh, one evening and said, Hey, Art, how about if I send a helicopter to your house and pick you up and just show you uh, Bigelow Aerospace, give you a big tour? Well, I was on my way, I think, to the uh, the embassy the following day, so I couldn't do it. But that's the kind of guy he is. That's why he reminds me of the uh, of the man on uh, the movie Contact. Uh, I'll always think of him that way. And then to follow it up, Bob sent flowers here. That was, oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago now. And they were absolutely spectacular. Uh, Bob, welcome to the program. Hi, Art. How are you? First of all, thank you. Thank you so very much for the flowers. Uh, we took a photograph of them and put them up on the website. Um, I thought for a while, you know, I'll stand in front of the flowers. And I thought, no, you know, standing in front of flowers that one guy sent to another just doesn't seem right. So I put my wife in front of them and took that photograph and put it up there for the weekend. Well, uh, my good friend, we wish you the absolute very best in your your new adventure. Well, thank you so much. And uh, speaking of adventures, yikes, you've gone and done it, huh? You've launched. We are... Um we are blessed. We are extremely, uh, we feel very fortunate that so many things have gone well on this spacecraft. And uh, believe me, we have um, uh, many, uh, a tremendous number, a wide variety of, of uh, hardware and software items that could uh, have caused us significant grief. And uh, up to this point in time, uh, she's behaving perfectly. All right. Uh, describe for everybody, and for me too, exactly what it is you've launched, what's in it, and what kind of uh, uh, data you're getting back. Well, we have, we have launched um, one of a series of Pathfinder spacecraft that uh, embodies a lot of the architectures and hardware and software items that we would intend to implement in full-scale structure. Uh, none of these kinds of things have been flown before. Um, in, in this manner, uh, in this particular case, this expandable system is uh, profiles the kind of structure that we would intend to uh, use as a habitational structure, 
and uh, this could be used in low Earth orbit. It could be used on the surface of the moon, on the surface of Mars, or uh, points in between. Wow. Um, with respect to where it is right now, I assume it's in low Earth orbit. It is. At the altitude, uh, she's at 342 miles. 342 miles. And what kind of uh, orbit does that put it in? It's, uh, I think it's about a 60, uh, 61 degree inclination. Okay. All right, so it, uh, it passes over uh, the U.S. how frequently? Uh, in a 24-hour period, it, uh, it will, it will um, acquire 15 orbits and uh, roughly 100 minutes uh, uh, to circle the Earth. And uh, so in a 24-hour period, it's, it's about 15 orbits, and, and it's in an irregular, the, the, the parabolic path is an irregular kind of path. And so, so uh, Las Vegas, uh, for example, is, is where our mission control facility is in North Las Vegas, and, and uh, some passes might be too far to the north or the south, and uh, we may miss those passes. We have uh, two other antennas under construction, one in, in Hawaii and one in uh, Fairbanks, Alaska, uh -huh. which should be online in about uh, three or four months. Okay, well, that'll certainly greatly expand your communication capability with it. it. Indeed it will. Um, what is it made out of, Robert? Uh, <clears throat> the, this, this structure... Um, is uh, fairly similar to what the full scale would be. It's not as um, the shields uh, that we fly, which which are the the materials that would protect you from radiation uh, harm or from uh, uh, a penetration of the structure by space debris. Uh, those shields would be more prodigious on a full scale, let's say. Than they are on this on this scale. So we have shielding. We we start off with a beta cloth exterior for thermal control. We 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 follow that with a variety of shielding kinds of uh, layers. Uh, there is a air barrier membrane that uh, is embraced by very strong Kevlar type of material and a certain sort of um, structure that that is uh, that that maintains that shape and. Um, Inside that is a scuff coat that uh, you'd be hard pressed to, to puncture with a knife, the point of a knife. And so, yeah, there are, there are very many layers that, if this were full scale, it would be about 16 inches in thickness. I see. All right. I'm I'm curious. I know that uh, there's a flying, literally a flying junkyard up there, um, in the low Earth orbit area. And I wonder how concerned you all are that something is going to come along at a very high velocity and just slam into it. It definitely can. Uh, we have sufficient, sufficient protection for small objects uh, that um, uh, might hit at oblique angles or uh, if, if, if it hits straight on, then, then that's about 35,000 miles an hour of, of impact. We're going about 17.5. And it depends on the size of those objects, and there are about 14,000 of those that NORAD tracks um, from golf ball size uh, and above. And um, uh, any of those would be devastating for both the International Space Station or, or other structures up there. The interesting thing about our shields is that through a lot of our hypervelocity impact tests, we have demonstrated that those, that those architectures are, are, are much more... Um, protective than the aluminum structures are and to space debris like that. Huh. Do you know offhand, uh, do you have instrumentation that would tell you if you have yet encountered uh, a anything at all? Oh, definitely. We would know the minute that that happens. And, and uh, our profile is that the spacecraft should fly. Our engineers are saying now that uh, it could be as long as 13 years. Uh, initially, I, I was told between three and a half and seven years. And so if... If all goes well and there, it doesn't encounter um, a, a, and by the way, the odds of hitting something are very small. It's a very large area uh, at that level of, of altitude, and, and it's an awful lot of room up there. Okay. So the odds are, in fact, I, I think I remember the Mir Space Station was calibrated to, to hit, to have, to suffer a, uh, uh, a fairly severe hit within uh, once in every 70 years. Huh. 